Hi and welcome to Low Cup About. I'm with Mila and today's video will be a little different. Usually I just do recipe videos, but I wanted to talk with you about Ozempic, Oprah's weight loss, and really our whole approach to weight in weight management. So if you haven't heard, in a recent interview, Oprah Winfrey um, told People magazine how she was able to achieve this drastic weight loss. And she said it's thanks to this new miracle drug. Now, she didn't specify what drug that is, um, but it sounds like she has used or is using one of those new GLP-1 drugs like Ozempic. Why I find this so interesting is because Oprah has seemingly tried just about everything when it comes to weight loss. She is now nearly 70 years old and she has always struggled with her weight. Now, she is one of the richest women on the planet. So, I think there's something to it that if someone like her, with all the connections that she has, with all the money and wealth that she has, that she was not able to use, to lose weight and keep it off until now, not until this new miracle drug came out. So, she, you know, I'm guessing she probably went from doctor to doctor, from nutritionist to nutritionist, tried just about everything, and it's not working. And she is not the only one. So in the US, over 40% of adults are obese, not just overweight, obese. Isn't that strange? And I think in her interview, she brought up some really good points. She brought up willpower. She mentioned that obesity or overweight is actually a brain disease. And she also talked about how she tried everything. Now, I think she's coming really close to the right conclusions, but not quite. And I will tell you why. But first, I want to talk with you about what actually Ozempic is, this miracle drug that seemingly so many celebrities are on now. So Ozempic is just the brand name of one of many semaglutide medications that are out on the market. Ozempic itself was just approved by the FDA. DA um, at the end of 2017 and it was approved for type 2 diabetes drug. Um, and then since then, a similar drug by the same company has come out, Wegovy or something like that, which it has been approved for weight loss. And there are other drugs like it on the market now. So the semaglutide medications basically simulate our natural peptide GLP-1. So as far as I understand it, GLP-1 acts as a hormone in our bodies and it tells the pancreas to increase the output of insulin. So it slows down the increase of our blood sugar and it also slows down digestion. That means that when you take one of these semaglutide medications, you don't feel as hungry anymore, you feel full for longer, and you won't experience these hunger attacks or these cravings that you had before. So when you're on this medication, you wouldn't think about food as much anymore. You probably wouldn't eat as much anymore because you don't have these cravings. And because it makes your glucose level, so your blood sugar drop, your body doesn't have all this extra sugar in the system anymore that it would usually just store as fat. So this drug really seems like this miracle drug, especially for people who've been trying to lose weight all their lives, just can't keep the weight off, um, thinking about food all the time, and now they're presented with this. So now let us go back to what Oprah actually said uh, in her interview. So this is what she told People magazine, quote, the fact that there's a medically approved prescription for managing weight and staying healthier in my lifetime feels like a relief, like redemption, like a gift. She further said that trying to lose weight occupied five 
decades of space in my brain, yo-yoing and feeling like why can't I just conquer this thing, believing believing willpower was my failing. And she further talked about how there was so much shame involved, you know, shame from others because she is in the public eye. She put shame on herself because she's just not able to lose weight. Why can't she do it? And and at some point she said she figured out that weight loss actually has nothing to do with willpower and that's a brain disease. And now that this miracle drug is coming in, it's basically treating this brain disease for her, right? Is it true that people who are overweight, obese, struggling to lose weight, that there is something going on in their brain, like Oprah said? And I don't think she's wrong. I just don't think she's right the way she meant it. Um, so I don't think most of us, at least, are born with something inherently wrong with our brains that makes us crave food all the time. I actually think it's the food that we eat that makes us crave more of the wrong food and also makes us gain weight. Um, and let me tell you why. So think about when people try to lose weight and they seek someone who they trust, someone, an expert's advice, a doctor, a nurse, a nutritionist, um, and you know whoever's advice Oprah has been seeking all these years. What do we usually hear? I think the common themes are usually eat less, eat balanced, and also the thing of willpower comes in, right? That if you're obese, it's because you have not been trying. You're just letting yourself go, right? It's just so easy. Just stop eating, right? Eat balanced. And then, you know, we have this my plate that we get from the government's guidelines or, or the food pyramid and that tells us that a balanced meal consists of carbohydrates, protein, some healthy fats, um, and very little sugar, right? And as long as you do that and you keep your meals small, that you should be able to lose weight. So then you're trying this, it's not working, um, you go back to wherever you went to, um, your expert, and then they're maybe telling you you're not actually following the guidelines, otherwise you would have lost weight. And and they may also blame your lack of willpower, right? And I'm sure that's what Oprah and so many others have been going through. Oprah, what Oprah is doing when it comes to eating, she is following Weight Watchers, which works on a point system. So every day you're allowed to have so many points and each food has a certain num amount of points and you can eat so much of everything. So there's a limit of how much of different foods you can eat. Now there are some foods on Weight Watchers that have zero points. That means of those foods you can eat as much as you want to. And let me tell you what kind of foods are on that list. Okay, so on the zero point foods, the foods that you can eat as much as you want of, on that list are non-starchy vegetables, good, fruits, including canned foods and unsweetened water, eggs, fish, shellfish, poultry, tofu, corn. Now they have a bunch of fat-free different cheeses, fat-free cottage cheese, fat-free yogurt, so everything, they're all about fat-free. Um, and popcorn and beans and peas. Do you know what corn, popcorn, and beans and peas have in common? They are all really high in carbs. So that means that when you're on Weight Watchers, you basically are allowed to eat as many carbs as you want, as long as you know it's one of those foods. And what's the problem with that? These, you know, some of those experts may tell you, well, these are complex carbohydrates, you know? These are whole carbs. Makes no difference. For your body, this makes no difference. Whether the carbs are sugar, simple carbs, or if they come from whole products, 
You've heard of the glycemic index, right? Also called GI. Um, it's an index that shows the blood, um, the blood sugar raising potential of a food. The GI of table sugar is 68. The GI of whole wheat bread is 71. Beef or pork or chicken, those foods don't have a GI because these foods have no carbs. So whether you eat whole wheat bread or you eat table sugar, once this is in your body, it has the same potential to raise your blood sugar. Okay, you may think, so it raises my blood sugar. Big deal. Except what happens to our body when a sudden rise of blood glucose occurs? A few things happen. One, our body turns extra glucose into body fat. So the more sugar there is in your blood, the more fat your body will store. But it's not all that you experience after a rapid spike of blood sugar. It's followed by a spike of insulin, which is followed by a hunger attack. This is why you can eat a whole meal of fast food plus your serving of soft serve ice cream and half an hour, an hour later, you could do the same thing again. And this is what our bodies experience and go through every day if we're on one of these balanced diets, you know, if you follow the guidelines of balanced meals with serving of complex carbohydrates or eat as much popcorn as you want, eat as much corn as you want, eat as many beans as you want. Now, do you see how willpower and brain disease come in here? What your body is going through? The feelings, the cravings you're going through, they're real. It's not just something we imagine because we lack willpower. When your body goes through glucose spikes, insulin spikes, glucose drops, you will feel hunger attacks. And guess what your hunger attacks will be craving? More carbs. And then this whole cycle continues. This is your balanced meal. This is what your experts tell you. Small meal, balance, low fat. Base it all on healthy whole wheat bread and whole wheat pasta. Your body doesn't care if it's whole wheat pasta or white pasta, whether it's multigrain bread or white bread. The absorption may be a little slower. The absorption of, your, of the sugar may be a little slower into your blood system but it hardly makes a difference at all. Now, I have no idea what experts advise Oprah Winfrey has been seeking on what they told her, but just based on, you know, what I've read about her, based on what she's telling us through this interview, which is she has been doing Weight Watchers, I think at least since 2015, because that's when she got on the board or something or became an ambassador, right? 2015, she became an ambassador for Weight Watchers. She is still advocating for Weight Watchers, but she's telling us by going on this miracle drug, she's telling us by going on this miracle drug that Weight Watchers is not working. Because if it was working, she wouldn't need a miracle drug. And this is not just, you know, to talk badly about Weight Watchers. Yeah, if you eat as much carbs as you want, unless you're an exception of the rule, you will probably crave more carbs. 40% of adults, 40% of adults are obese. Do you think they're all lacking willpower? You don't think they've tried? You don't think they can Google what are the nutrition guidelines? nutrition guidelines that the government gives us, that the dietitians give us? Yes, you don't think they've been trying? You have not been trying? And here, a few statistics to show us this connection, blood sugar and obesity. 
90% of people with diabetes or with, of adults with diabetes are overweight and obese, overweight or obese. And 38% of adults have pre-diabetes. So they haven't quite reached the threshold for type 2 diabetes yet, but they're getting there. And these statistics come from the CDC. By the way, um, those stats that I'm mentioning and also Oprah's interview, I will put the links all down in the description of the video so you can look them up if you like. So let's get back to Ozempic or the other GLP-1 medications for a minute. These medications basically help you out with what is going wrong in your body because we are on a high carb diet. So when you're on a high carb diet and you're staying on a high carb diet, a medication like Ozempic or a similar GLP-1 drug would definitely help you out because that's what you need, right? Eating high carbs, you have high blood sugar. You need less of insulin, right? That's what GLP-1 GLP does. It increases the pancreas output of insulin. What else would help you out? With, this, with all this carbs, in your stomach that's now going to enter your bloodstream as sugar, it would help if this absorption could be slowed down immensely, right? If the absorption of sugar into your bloodstream could be slowed down, that would help out. Well, in, in those cases, Ozempic or Wegovy, well, they're great. But we could also solve this problem by just not eating all these carbs anymore. Right? Wouldn't that help? Now understand that, you know, it, it can be difficult, especially once you're in this cycle and it is like an addiction, right? To drop the carbs. I mean, it's hard. And I dropped, I stopped eating a high carb diet over seven years ago. And it, it really does feel like you drop it, like you're being cut off from a drug, like you're craving it, right? So I can, I mean, I can see that it, if you took something like Ozempic that helps you from this cold turkey cut off from your drug, the carbs, that you, you know, that it would make this transition so much easier. But I don't think that people who use Ozempic or Wegovy or other semaglutide medications, that they just take it for a few weeks. I think they stay on it. They would stay on it and just like Oprah, you know, who continues what she says, you know, I don't know if what she says is necessarily what she does, but she says she still does weight watches and point counting on top of whatever um, miracle drug she's using. So she continues her old habits, right, her old diet, and then she's using this drug that basically has to counteract the effect of her diet, instead of just changing our diet. And I think there are a few reasons to do that, just to change what we eat. Um, and I went, so I'm not an expert at all, and I'm not gonna give you guys like medical advice or anything like that. Um, but I went to grad school for nutrition, and interestingly enough, when I went that keto or low carb diet, it was criticized. So this is what I learned in school, that keto is bad, it's, you cannot do it long term, you know, your brain needs the carbs, your body needs the carbs, otherwise you won't have energy, this is what I learned. Basically, I think what everybody else learns too, unless you do some research, and that's what I did. Um, and there's some great authors and books out there, and I will also link them in the description below, because if you're interested in something like that, I do recommend do your own research. Um, I mean, if you're listening to this, you're either probably already doing some kind of low-carb diet or you're interested in that, right? Maybe you're interested in that because whatever you've been doing so far is not working. And I don't think it's a lack of willpower. Um, so some great um, keto and low-carb specialists who are out there are um, Maria Emmerich or Mark from Mark's Daily Apple. Um, also, uh, Dr. Davis, who wrote the Wheat Belly book, and they all have different approaches to low carb, but they're all 
definitely criticize, you know, wheat, grains, um, and basically what they all agree upon is that the standard American diet is not working. And I think it'd be a shame that we would stick to something that's not working. I mean, if you're given advice and it's not working, should you not seek different advice instead of saying, okay, I guess the advice is right, I'm doing the right thing, but on top of that, I also need to do, <laughs> use this drug now. A drug that, by the way, or Zempic or similar drug, that costs $1,000 a month. 1000 You know, that's not an issue for Oprah, but yeah, you have to inject it like once a week or something. And then, and then you have to stay on it. Unless, I guess, you change what you eat, but yeah, because uh, a recent, a recent study, I think a rather, you know, they're all rather reasons because this whole drug is recent. A recent study showed that, uh, that found that those who got off the drug, a semaglutide drug, regained most of the weight. And they also lost the benefits of the low blood sugar that they experienced while they were taking the blood. So you have to stay on this drug, like, and then you have to increase your dosage after a while. Yeah, that was also found. The, the benefits seem to level off after 68 weeks, unless you increase the dose. So that's great, right? Uh, I don't know. Oh, and another thing I learned. I, I was doing some research um, about Zempic. There's not, you know, it's that, like this is the thing that I, you know, I don't like. It's such a recent medication. Zempic only was approved end of 2017. Then Wegovy was only approved 2021. We don't really know the long-term effects of these drugs. And another study showed that like a third to a half of the weight lost is actually muscle loss. Which is, you know, it's pretty normal. You lose muscle when you lose weight. It's not just going to be fat you lose. But um, like in this study, there were 140 participants they lost 15 pounds muscle and 32 pounds fat during their 68-week trial. 15 pounds muscle. Now, guess what? If you get off this drug and you gain this weight back, which it looks like you will unless you change your eating habits, do you think you will gain those muscles back? The, the weight you'll gain. Uh, the weight you'll gain back is this is all just gonna be fat. And for someone like Oprah, she's 69, she's nearly 70 years old. This is kind of a dangerous game she's playing, no? You know, at this point, it's very difficult to build muscle mass, you know? The older you, the older we get, the harder it becomes. I mean, I can see it now with me. It's so much harder to keep muscle, gain muscle weight. But I mean, when you're 70 years old, that's, you, you're not gonna gain this muscle back that you lost. So yeah, this is just, <laughs> I'm getting all red from, getting all red here, <laughs> ranting, I guess. Um, it's just my, a little take on it, you know? Again, I'm, I'm not an expert. It just, th those are just the things that I found out doing some research. And I'm gonna provide you the links in the description below so you can do your own research if you're interested um what do you think i i mean i do see benefits of using it you know short term to to be able to break this habit right to break the cycle get your mind off food right i think this is where it kind of needs to start but i think this Standard American diet, the advice that has been given for us for decades now, low fat, high healthy carbohydrates, this is not working for the majority of people. Um, you know, with the majority being now overweight, 40% being obese, nearly 40% being pre-diabetic in our country. Something is going amiss. And I know who's profiting. I mean, someone is profiting off that, right? The company, the companies who um, produce 
the semaglutide medications are profiting, the pharmacies, uh, pharmaceutical companies are for sure profiting. I don't know. I guess the doctors are profiting because they're prescribing it, right? They're getting patients. Yeah, just something to think about. Um, I think sometimes we just need to do our own research, you know, take our health in our own hands because something is just not right. And it's it telling to me that someone, as I mentioned before, as incredibly wealthy, famous, connected as Oprah, she cannot break it, right? She can. She was not able to break the cycle of yo-yo, weight gain, weight loss. Not with willpower, she said, for sure, but also not with the advice she has been given. All right, this is it for today. Um, let me know what you thought of this video. Did you enjoy it? Um, I think it's an interesting topic. I would like to hear from you guys about it. Maybe you've had experience with those medications and also maybe you just started low carb, have been on a low carb way of eating and how has it been going for you? Did it break a cycle of weight gain, weight loss? You let me know in the comments. I love to read your comments about this topic. I'm really interested. Um, yeah, I wish you a wonderful year 2024. Bye.